Good morning, boys and girls. All right, we're ready to dough in. We've got 10 litres in here, which is probably about 20% of the overall. It's a bit more than 20% of the overall. And a huge grain bill, which is 40% torrified wheat. Then there's some pills and the malt and some maris otter. Uh, extra power maris otter and some, I don't know, can't remember. I need to look at my thing. I weighed it all out last night. Um, Vienna malt, that's right. Now the purpose of doing a turbid mash, actually let's get it mashed in uh, and stirred in and make a porridge and then I'll come back. We are doughed in and it's, um, it's one of those that are really um, very, very thick, almost porridgey. It's not even, not even porridgey. It seems quite dry. So now we bring it up uh, to 55. Okay, boom, boom, boom. Hopefully we will start to see something going through the herms. Here we go, it's flushing out the boiling water I put through it. And this is that creamy, milky, yucky looking. So I'm gonna set this for 50 because it's bound to overshoot. Now this is slightly different from a normal brew. The stainless pot ready, because so we're going to pull uh, probably about two, three litres off of this first rest, thick, creamy, yucky, and then we're going to maintain it at 85 degrees in there. Now this really is, um, I don't know, like more of a cake. than a mash it is pretty dry anyway the um, the stages are first bring it up to 45 let it sit there for 15 minutes which is what I is dud and then now what I've done because it was too dry I've put a little bit extra water in there so I'm going to run it through the herms to bring it up to 55 um, reason for that technically you would normally uh, let's open all these get it going on and we want that up to 55 I was doing it by doing it by hand but it's probably worth letting the herms kick in it will overshoot a little bit but that's purely because of where the um, thermo well and the PT100 is placed. So that will just recirc now. I'll give it a little stir just to help it up to 55. And then, uh, also that would help. Then rest it again. And then I'm gonna draw about three, three of maybe four liters off. And then we're going to boost this up to i think about 65 66 and leave it there for 45 minutes um and very very long sparge thanks to the valentine it will be an exceptionally long sparge um so that's creeping up reasonably well going through the herms come back when we're ready to draw some off well depending on where I take the measurement in here. <laughs> There's a difference of about 10 degrees. I think what I'm going to do, leave that up there, give it a stir. I've turned that off. That's up to 56.9. So give it a little bit of a stir. I've added a little bit more HLT water because frightened that I'd end up with a solid cake so this is a bit better so we took this at 55 and then give it 15 minutes so to half past 11 I think I'm going to close the shutter door because it's pretty mild today but I don't want to be dropping 
the temperature too much. So let's uh, chuck that in there. See, that's 57.3, 57.4. 57.8 there we got here 55 54 point yeah so you know it is fairly diverse temperature range in there um, yeah so give it the two half 11 and then draw off and pop in that pot over there so I've pulled off <clears throat> about three litres. Not bad for a Friday morning. And I'm going to raise the temperature. Can we see that on there? Up to 88 and then hold it at 88. It's got a, a wee way to go yet. And here I'm about to top up what I've just taken out. So it will then flush what was in the Herms. I love that. That's ever so pretty. I'm not using the underback. I might do later. I'm going to see how we go with the sparge. So we're now going to bring this up to 65 and then leave it at 65 for 45 minutes. Let's see how this is. Have a quick check. Oh, I can't be bothered to wait. I'm just going to check this. I don't want to overfill. So one, two, three. And a little bit, tiny, tiny bit more. Good, good. So now turn all of these off. And I can then reassemble the Herms circuit to get it up to, hang on, what am I doing? Oh, come on. 65, you dickhead. Right, good. If you're gonna have a pit, you might as well do it automatically. I've been doing it manually, you see. But let's do it automatically, see where we go. Right, reassemble it and then get the uh, circuit going round again. Maintaining that at 88 degrees was something of a challenge. What we're doing now is very gradually, I haven't opened this fully, we're very gradually dropping this. So I'm going to take 10 litres out into there and then we're going to raise the, te the mash temp to 78 degrees. This is sort of where we're starting to drag out all of those strange extra sugars. Now, the history behind the turbid mash as I understand it, is to do with taxation. And um, I think it was, there was a law called, uh, or a tax called the mash ton tax in Belgium, where you were taxed on the size of the mash ton. So I wouldn't have much of a problem here. However, because of that, they had to find more inventive ways of getting their mash sorted. And the way that they did that was by... Um, having a multi-stage mash to get more out of the grains uh, than they would normally by using the British, what was known as, I think it was known as the English, English system. Um, I'll make sure all of these are done up, and I? Yes, there we go, brilliant. So that's now the lid's on, so I can't show it going into boil kettle. Um, so yeah, so they had to become more, more inventive. What happened after they abolished that tax though was interesting, in that they went down to the sort of like the basic our, our mash system, which is a single infusion mash. And they found that the resulting beers were, were actually quite thin and tasteless. And, uh, and so as a consequence, they went back to doing the, the, the turbid mash. Now what this does, this, this process does, is it pulls out both fermentable and non-fermentable sugars. The fermentable sugars are the ones that Saccharomyces, normal beer brewing yeast, would normally um, convert to alcohol. But then there are a whole load of residual, I think it's something to do with long chain sugar, something like that. I ought to read, ought to read up on it really, shouldn't I? 
that would be a good idea. Um, that then things like the Brettanomyces latch onto and uh, and convert. So it's a long stage. So you've got your Saccharomyces comes in first and eats all the good sugars. Then what's left, the Brett comes along. So it's a long process. The ones I've got up there, upstairs, sorry, up there. I'm on a camera, I can't just point. Oh, I can, there you go. Um, they've been been up there for a year now. Uh, I'll be tasting them tomorrow when this is um, cooled down and into the fermenter. So now, right, yes, anyway, sorry. I'll go to do, I'll go to flush through um, with 95 degrees, bring this up now. I did run a little bit through, bring this up to 75 or 78, can't remember. Go and have a look. And this is the last of the um, second runoff. So that's the first runoff in there. Second runoff, and then we take it up to 70. I'm going to do it to 78 because that's what a rebel I am. And then by the time I transfer it into there, it won't take long to take it up to 88. What you should then do is, oh, here we go, is uh, transfer from the kettle back onto here. Um, I might not do that, depending on how stuck my mash looks. Because <laughs> there is a lot in there. Um, but I am then going to flush it with 99 degrees from here. So take this, this then up to uh, the next level. Everything gets really, really sticky when you do this. My three litres of sticky, morning sticky. <laughs> Stop it. Um, right, shut up and carry on. Now transferred into the copper. I'm going to bring that up to 88 degrees and let it sit at 88 degrees. I'm now going to add that to there. The reason I didn't put that in there straight away was because the heating elements, it probably wouldn't, three litres wouldn't be enough to, to cover the heating elements. So this now, bringing this up to um, 78, I'm going to rest it at 78 for about 20 minutes. Not exact science, but somewhere around 20 minutes. And then I'm going to uh, uh, drain most of that into the boil kettle. But more importantly then, I'm going to do it very gradually, obviously, using the underback, or the grant, as, uh, as Americans will call it. I don't care. Call it whatever you want. It doesn't bother me, as long as it works. So we will then have a nice gentle into here and then I'm just gonna give it a very very gradual probably not gonna use the Valentine I'm just gonna let hopefully I've got a nice grain bed filter here I might vol off a little bit do a circulation a little bit just to uh, start getting some clarity here and then very gradually top up here to about 45 so quite full actually and then because it's going to be a long boil it will come down to about 32 I should think which is about what I'm going to chuck in to the cool ship. So this is coming up nicely. I should really, in fact I'm going to drop that around to 77 because it will overshoot. So that should now turn off. Good. That's still going to overshoot a little bit. Um, so we're going to let that rest. That will probably, I'm sure that's going to go up to about 78. Yeah, that. I don't know. Might need to be tinkering with these PIDs a little bit in the new year. I know I've only been saying that for about two or three years, but don't, don't worry, don't panic. It shouldn't go massively over 78. You watch, come back in a minute, it'll be at 90. Uh, so, yes, give that 20 odd minutes, 20, 25 minutes. And then, oh, I can turn that off. Well, actually, no, I'll leave that on just in case the temperature does drop significantly. I'm just going to show you, actually, what a beautiful day it is outside. Um, I just heard on wireless that this is the warmest New Year's Eve on record. Look at 
this. There's bits of sunshine and everything. A lovely day. Uh, I'm not going to leave that open for too long because, as I say, it probably will chill this down a little bit. See, that's gone up to 80 now. You fucker. Uh, I might give it a little stir. You're ugly. I didn't stir it enough. You're lazy. No, nope, that's not stirring it at all, is it? Um, sorry, what do you expect? It's last day of the year. Why, uh, why break the habit of a lifetime and be sensible? Um, I need to get this done. It's actually half past one now, and I was supposed to be meeting some friends to test a new smod beer. Two smod beers, two smod stouts at two. It's going to be a bit later than that, so I'll, uh, I'll send Richard uh, a message now. Send him a photo of this as well. Um, so, yeah, give that 20 minutes. That's going to take us up to about 10 to 2 transfer most of it in here and then give it a really hot sparge to drop all that out i think i did the uh the reasons for turbid mashing didn't i yes i'm sure i did in the previous clip so this now i'm going to pop in there uh, this is where the grant really comes into its own this is the, the speed at which i'm draining the mash tun getting ready here to flush this out Right, I might have missed it. I think I've done the main flush. Good. Getting the air out of system. This pump doesn't seem to be operating as uh, effectively as perhaps it should. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, that'll do. Let's cut the power off for that and um, get the sparge ball on, ready. I'm not going to sparge it yet, I'm going to wait. I'm going to get a couple of these out of here, just nice and gently, throttled right back. Yeah, it, it could speed up, but I don't want it to. So I don't want too much draw on that grain bed. That's better, nice and gentle. Temperature has dropped a little bit now, hasn't it? 75.2 from 78. Ha! Ah, and then, this is sitting nicely at 88. I've put the first run off back in there. And then in a moment, I'm going to flush it, going to sparge it gradually with 99 degrees that's probably quite quite warm but we've been for all of those stages 35 45 65 75 with a couple of degrees either way 78 i think we was at um, so we should have a nice range of fermentable and non-fermentables in there ready for the little natural beasties to uh, get their teeth into over the next year or so. Let's just speed that up a little bit. Right, good. Now the um, sparge needs to keep going until we're at point two Plato. And so I get a chance to switch the easy dens onto Plato mode. <laughs> now, um, and that app's on my phone, unfortunately. I haven't got the other phone here. Uh, with the app on so I can't actually show you it on but I've shown you the easy dens app before so we're very very gradually and this is a very such a you know, a nice gradual slow sparge we don't need um, there's no there's no prizes for speed in this we don't need to to run it through terribly quickly as long as we don't get a stuck uh, stuck sparge stuck mash we'll be all right but we seem to be okay as long as we've got stuff coming out of here, then we're all right. We haven't, we're not, I'm not sparging at the moment. I'm just letting it gently all run off. So I'm going to do that probably for about 20 minutes. This is holding sort of not too bad. 
it's at 86 at the moment and uh, that's because I've just chucked a load of that in there from here so this will be cooling down in here I'm not going to get the temp temperature probe I've just washed it um, by the way yes the the, uh, the the mash pH was 5.2 so that's okay um, I'm happy with that didn't need to add any um, lactic acid at all it makes a change but then it is that is a big you know it's a big old mash that isn't it right big mash the fish are gonna love that when that goes into canal tomorrow they will go bonkers for it I've got a little bit of um, uh, spare Vienna malt in there which I'm gonna chuck in tomorrow that will float on the surface and if the ducks are around they will like that right so I'm not gonna film any more of this I'm gonna come back when we're pretty much sparged out um, and this is loaded up probably somewhere up around here I should think quite high anyway now here's a problem or well, actually maybe not so much of a problem um, today's as I said the warmest New Year's Eve on record and it's about 21 and a half 22 degrees now the problem is that's sort of almost like summery temperature and a lambic season would normally end around April March April because it's getting too warm so my worry is gonna be is it too warm oh well hard luck uh, what I will be doing I'll turn the heater off over the door because um, it is quite warm in here yeah uh, yes, sorry. Anyway, I'm about to do the final sparge. So I'm going to knock this up to boiling and I'm going to sparge it with near boiling water. Jury's out on this. Some people say sparge it at 88, but I think literally wash everything you can off there. So that's what I'm going to do. Only with about five odd litres maybe six litres just to take that up there so yeah five probably at the most just to see what we can get out of there and again through the underback it's probably mm, half a litre in there so far so we're now at 90 99 91 I'm um, let's see how far it will go I think it's definitely starting to boil here all right, um, so after the sparge, I'm just going to let that sit in there because, strangely enough, it's now three o'clock. Um, so I'm going to set that going. When that's empty, turn it off, and we're going down to the Dorothy Pax, which is a, a really cool little bar down at Victoria Keys, run by Richard, Simon and Bryony. Uh, so yeah, I think I'm just going to start it. Start it going now. Gentle ish so final sparge of this very long turbid mash <laughs> and uh, that's about as that's about as drippy as we want it really we don't want it any more drippy than that good good i think i'm gonna go and have a drink now down at the packs <laughs> <laughs> 